Yoga is bringing the mind into the body and connecting it with spirit. How often do we need to practice yoga? One needn't attend an hour class three times a week for the benefits of yoga to take effect. There are many things that we do in our day-to-day -day activities where we can meld our mind with our bodies. Walking the dog, watering the garden, praying, working, resting, playing, parenting, eating, drinking, cleansing, and breathing. Breathing is one thing that we cannot live without. We can go without food or water or sleep for days, but barely can we go minutes without breathing. Our bodies are the only ones that we get in this life, so it's important that we nourish and cleanse them physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Nourishment and cleansing are necessary for all of these aspects for optimal growth and sustenance of the body, mind, and spirit. For many years, the health and fitness industries have campaigned, no pain, no gain. I, I was just thinking that every time that I go to the gym, I'm sore for two, three, four days afterwards. And it just seems kind of like why, why would you go through all that trouble of you know, getting healthy if all you do is making yourself in pain all the time? It's a really good point. And uh, again, I have a little bit of a, my philosophy that I've, I've brought together. And I kind of feel like we've all been given um, information that isn't necessarily true. There's no pain, no gain. But, has been the thought process for the last 30 years. I believe this fallacy has kept many Americans from exercising in their normal daily routine. There are those that overwork their body, like using a regular car for a race car, take care of the spring and fall tune-ups, <coughs> changing the oil, changing the tires. When we use that car in the way that it's supposed to be used, it could last for years beyond its life expectancy. When we use that vehicle like a race car, its life expectancy is not as long. Yoga is much more than about having the perfect body. The body houses the mind and spirit and soul. The body is a temple that houses our feelings, our emotions our thoughts and behaviors, our dreams and our fears. Yoga is an art, like music, and the body is the instrument. We cannot expect to be one of the very few who play Chopin the first time we sit down for a lesson. And we cannot expect ourselves to comprehend all that yoga has to offer at our first practice or even in the first year or decade of practice. Yoga teaches that the balances of the states, the states of physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, all affect one another. And that when any one of these are out of balance, they also affect the other. For example, if we're filled with anxiety about the piles of work on our desks, we may not be able to sleep at night from the thoughts crowding our mind. But if we know techniques to help calm the mind and the body, we can overcome the imbalances and put our mind and body to rest. Or if we notice that we're angry, unable to concentrate or do the task at hand, can we allow ourselves to make mistakes? We may be able to catch ourselves in our anger. We may have the techniques to release the tension 
that allows us to concentrate using mindfulness and breathing techniques. Perhaps we are going through a loss in our lives or suffering from an ailment or simply living through the aging process and we're unable to do what we used to do in life. Yoga helps us to find what we are capable of doing right here, right now, today. And it helps us to release our views of our limitations. Fear is a limitation. It limits our breathing, causes us to go into flight or fight, or sometimes it paralyzes us with an inability to move or act. Fear can cause us to lose our breath or hold it, keeping oxygen from our brain. When we aren't getting oxygen into our brain, our decision-making capabilities are clouded. When a child starts crying uncontrollably, we tell that child, slow down, take a deep breath. We try to soothe that child. As with our own selves, when we're in a calm and relaxed state of mind, we're able to think clearer, make better decisions. We can create our emotional state by controlling our breath rather than our emotional state controlling our breath. But we must use our minds to do this. And yoga is about training our minds. The type of yoga that I teach is called Mind Yoga. Um, it's really not about the name, it's mostly about what comes forward from that. And the preface behind it, like on a very basic level, is coming from a place of Iyengar Yoga, which is about alignment and posture. Mm -hmm. And learning how to even find the fundamental principles of how you would line up your knees with your feet, or line up the correct um, bone structure with your feet to your ankles, to your knees, to your hips. We're moving into then Hatha Yoga and moving in more of a physical asana in the sense of it has more movement to it, taking both properties and bringing it to a class setting so that if you're coming in from a place of recovering from cancer or recovering from stroke or even coming in from a back pain injury or a knee pain injury, you can start from a very, very basic, simple asana, but then once the process of healing has come into place, you can then advance to become stronger and stronger. Thank you for joining us on our discovery of yoga and how it can be incorporated into your daily life to reduce suffering and continuously grow the garden of ourselves.